This is Dave Taylor on June 25th, 2013. What you see in front of you is Wills Road in Bell Alton, uh, Maryland. I just walked down the length of this road. It is near this road that the Pine Thicket once stood where Booth and Harold hid out for five days while Thomas Jones tended to them. Um, on my way back, I'll take a few pictures of the Collis House, which is the assumed place where Jones first found the two fugitives. But right now I am going on a little walking trek, um, trying to replicate the path that Jones, Harold, and Booth took out of the pine thicket when Jones had ascertained that it was safe to put the men across the Potomac River. So I've already walked it down Wills Road and now I've come to where the train tracks go across it. And then this one is called Crystal Lane, I believe. As you see, Wills Road dead ends, so I can't keep going. I'm going to keep going down Crystal Lane, and then I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to go on the train tracks for a little bit in order to reach the next spot. But this is my journey today. It's about oh 90 degrees, so I probably should have planned this for a cooler day. But so that's Wills Road. I'm going to walk down Crystal Lane. And then I'm going to follow the train tracks. I'll stop and do this again, but I find I found that walking and talking at the same time just made a very shaky image. So, I'll be back. Well, I've reached what seems like the end of Crystal Lane. It now curves. There's the train tracks. Crystal Lane now curves over to some people's houses. So what I'm going to do is hug the train tracks now. I'm going to keep walking down next to it. I will be sure to look both ways all the time. And uh, that should enter me out, uh, exit me out eventually on... Faulkner Road, which is right by 301, which is a road I'm going to have to cross to get to Huckleberry. Alright, and so I'll be back. Well, I'm a little tired, and it's a little hot, so I'm taking a little break sitting on this dead log next to the pond, next to the, uh, the uh, train tracks here. I keep, I'm going to keep walking this way to get toward Faulkner Road and then cross 301. <laughs> right now I'm just kind of in the middle of nowhere, so I'm going to grab some water. And also, I'm going to read you right now because I brought with me my... Uh, Thomas Jones book. I mean, this is his, a reprint, obviously, but John Wilkes Booth, an account of his sojourn in Southern Maryland, blah, 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 giant title. But he does have a part in it where he talks about how they crossed, uh, how he walked them. So let me see if I can find that. And I'm going to put the camera down somewhere. You may or may not be able to see me, depending on the angle, but hopefully you can hear me. You might see up my nose. Hold on. I can't see what you see, so I'm a bit sweaty. Hopefully that works. Let me see. <sighs> Gotta find the right page. Uh, Alright. I told them the safest way to proceed was for Booth to ride my horse and Harold to walk beside him, while I would proceed them by 50 or 60 yards. When I came to a convenient place, I would pause and listen, and if I could, and if the way seemed clear, would whistle. As soon as I gave the signal, but not before, they were to come forward till they reached the place where I was waiting, then stop there till I went forward again and gave the signal for their advance, and thus we would proceed to the river. If they did not hear my signal for the advance within a reasonable time after I went forward, I told them to get as noiselessly and as speedily as possible out of the road, and wait until they heard from me. With difficulty, Booth was raised by Harold and myself and placed upon my horse. Every movement, in spite of his stoicism, wrung a groan of anguish from his lips. His arms were then given to him, the blankets rolled up and tied behind him on the horse, and we began the perilous journey. The, road we, the route we had to take was down the cart track, as I have mentioned, to the public road a distance about one mile and a half. That's pretty much where I am right now. I'm guessing that this railroad was probably put in right near this back then the uh, cart track then down the public road for another mile to the corner of my farm and then through my place to the river about one mile further making the whole distance to be traveled about three and a half miles the part of our journey which lay over the public road was the most dreaded by me for not only were were we more liable to meet someone in that part of the journey, but we also had to pass two dwelling houses situated close to the road, one occupied by a Negro named Sam Thomas, where there were children nearly always stirring around, and the other was the home of Mr. John Ware, where there were several dogs. The night had grown inky dark. No rain was falling, 
but the dampness clung to everything and fell in drops upon us as we made our way among the tweet, uh, trees. And I'm going to stop right there and I'll continue reading when I get a little bit closer to uh, Huckleberry. So I'm going to get a drink and then I will continue down this way. Whoop, down there and continue my journey until I get to Huckleberry. Signing off. Well, those of you afraid for my safety, have no fear. I'm now off of the railroad tracks. And I'm now walking, I'm going to walk uh, that way down Faulkner Road, which then will get me to having to cross 301. Which, who knows, maybe that is the public road that Jones was talking about in his book. But I'm not going to get hit by a train, at least not on my way there. I will have to retrace what I just did on my way back, but it doesn't seem to be a heavily used railroad track. So now I'm continuing down Faulkner Road, which will intersect at one point with 301. I'm going to have to watch out for cars here. Signing off. Well, there is Faulkner Road that I just walked down. In front of me, you can see my train tracks that I probably could have stayed on if I wanted to, but I feel more safe being on the road. And then this is Faulkner as it continues to go down. I made a mistake. This road right here that I'm going to take is Pope's Creek, and it will cross 301, which is the intersection right there, which I'm going to be a bit hairy for a pedestrian, but I can do it. And then I'll continue down Pope's Creek until I reach Huckleberry. So, so this is the intersection of Faulkner and Pope's Creek. And then I'm going to go across 301, and then down Pope's Creek until I get to Huckleberry. I'm not sure the distance from there, from here to there, but... I will maybe take a break on my way to Huckleberry, just because I'll be tired. Or, maybe I'll just wait till I get to Huckleberry, but at least you know... You'll know that I survived crossing 301 shortly. Signing off. Well, no issue crossing 301. It's behind me. And I actually stopped at that little look store right there and picked up some Gatorade. Did not pack enough water for this. So now I'm walking down Pope's Creek Road. And eventually, Huckleberry will come up on my right. Before I get to Huckleberry, I will stop by, or maybe it's after, I don't know, I'll have to see. Uh, there will be a sign that points out Dense Meadow, but if I get to that, but I can't recall off the top of my head if that comes before or after Huckleberry from the direction that I'm going. So, I'll uh, let you know when I get there. Signing off. Well, one thought I have while doing this is that I would not want to do this at night. Mainly because, even though I'm walking the daytime and I can see things, I'm hearing so many animals, I'm guessing deer, maybe even smaller ones, but just rustling around me, running away when I come near them. And if it was at night and I was already on high alert because I was worried about troops or people, really, anyone seeing me, uh, I would be a nervous wreck during this entire affair. I'm surprised that Jones and Davy and Booth were all able to maintain their composure doing this just... 60 feet at a time, stopping, listening, waiting for the whistle, and then continuing again. Uh, I, w I would be, I'd be very hard to not be paranoid, because I know I would be. Well, I am close to the uh, end point here. I can see directly in front of me the sign out on the road for Huckleberry, and between the little pine bushes here, the pine trees, I can see uh, Huckleberry itself every now and again. <sighs> I'm tired. And here's the sign, Huckleberry, home of Confederate male agent Thomas A. Jones, who helped to shelter and aided the escape of John Wilkes Booth and David Harold in their flight April 16th to the 21st, 1865. So here's the sign. Now I'm going to walk over to Huckleberry, which is behind those little trees, past that one haystack right in the middle there. I'm hoping that the... Jesuits here at the Loyal Retreat House will pardon the um, slight intrusion onto their property, but I feel like if I'm going to get in trouble with anybody, whether it be the railroad company for walking next to the rails, or maybe I've done maybe a little bit of other slight trespassing on people's lands, I feel like the, the Christians might be a little more forgiving, since I'm just going to walk up, take a few pictures, actually a video, sit for a little bit, read from good old T. Jones, and then I will start my trek back. Because my car is packed all the way, it's parked all the way back at the pine thicket where I started. So I think it took me, I'll have to look when I'm sitting down, then how long it took me to uh, get here. But there's Huckleberry, and we'll be closer in a little, little bit. 
Well, I am currently seated in a little, the shade of a small little bush. I actually have no idea if it's a bush or a tree. It's kind of small. Uh, right in front of Huckleberry. I don't see anyone around, so I hope they don't mind. I'm going to take my little break here under the shade for a little bit. Drink some of my Gatorade. That was definitely a good choice to stop and get that. And uh, read some more from Thomas Jones. Let's see if I can get my book out here. <clears throat> now, Huckleberry was not the... Uh, only home of Thomas Jones. If I would continue down Pope's Creek Road, uh, past Captain Billy's, and then um, and then it curves back around toward 301 eventually, um, there is a house on the bluff called Raven's Cliff, and uh, Jones uh, lived there for most of the war until near the end when he um, sold it, and then he moved full-time, I believe, here to Huckleberry. His house on the bluff, you know, helped with his Confederate uh, mail activities so he could see across the river to Virginia. One second. But uh, it was here to Huckleberry that Jones brought Booth and Harold as they walked what I just essentially walked. Let me find that point in Jones's book. Oh, I guess I have a little more to read about their journey here, so I'll start there. As we journeyed cautiously on the feelings, on my feelings were wrought up to an intense degree of anxiety, just like I said would, I would feel, not so much on my own account as for the successful accomplishment of what I had undertaken. When I paused to listen, the croaking of a frog, the distant barking of a dog, the whir of the wing of some night bird as it passed over my head would cause my heart to beat quicker and my breath to come faster. When I gave the low whistle agreed upon as the signal that the road was clear, it sounded in my ears as loud as the blast of a trumpet. And though the ground was soft and yielding, the trampling of the slowly advancing horse to my, own, to my overwrought fancy was like the approaching of a troop. At length we reached the public road and entered upon the most dangerous part of our dangerous journey. I walked softly down the road, listening intently, but could hear no sound that indicated danger. I paused and gave the signal, and waited breathlessly as Booth and Harold entered the highway and came toward me. When they reached me, I led the horse a few yards out of the road and told them to wait there. I then went past Sam Thomas's. There was a light burning in the house that showed dimly through the mist, but I heard no one stirring. I was afraid to give the signal too close to the house, so I went on a little further than usual before I whistled. The house was safely passed. Again, the horseman and his companion waited, and I went forward to the next most dangerous place, Ware's house. I walked past the gate and listened. Not a sound was heard. I moved a few yards further down the road and again gave the signal. As they came on by the house, I expected every minute to hear the dogs bark, but they kept quiet. So far, all had gone well. We were now nearing my place and would soon be off the public road, and I began to breathe more freely. At last, after what seemed like an, an interminable age, we reached my place. We stopped under a pear tree near the stable, about forty or fifty yards from my house. It was then between nine and ten o'clock. Wait here, I said, while I go in and get you some supper, which you can eat here while I get my, some for myself. Oh, said Booth, can't I go in and get some of your hot coffee? It cut me to the heart. Oh, sorry, got distracted, there's a tick on me. Um, it cut me to the heart when this poor creature, whose head had not been under a roof, who had not tasted warm food, felt the glow of a fire, or seen a cheerful light for nearly a week, there in the dark, wet night at my threshold, made this piteous request to be allowed to enter a human habitation. I felt a great wave of pity for him, and a lump rose in my throat as I answered him. My friend, it wouldn't do. Indeed, it would not be safe. There are servants in the house who would be sure to see you, and then all would be lost. Remember, this is your last chance to get away. To refuse that appeal, prompted by a feeling prompted by a feeling I could so well understand, was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And I'm going to stop my reading right there. So, they got so close, Booth and Harold, right here. 
but they were not allowed to enter Huckleberry for fear that they would be betrayed. Pick up the camera here, and then we'll, uh, I'll get up and walk around the house a little bit. So we get to see. Obviously, the house has been remodeled since Jones's time. Look, it even has satellite TV now. And the original uh, part of the house, this part would be new, but the original part is right here. We'll just do a little 360 of the house. I'll have to walk away a bit. So this is part of the Loyola Retreat House. I'm not sure how it is used. I heard a rumor that uh, the people here call this the Trader House because Jones was a traitor and helped Booth and Harold. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm going to try turning the camera, but I don't know if it likes it when I turn it in the middle of the video. It might change, but there we go. Here's, here's the back of the house. side entrance. I have to go under these trees. Oh, well, that's pretty. Lone flower. Don't know what type of tree this is. It's very pretty. I'm going to go back to my spot over here. Now, if I... <laughs> Probably if I got permission, and if I uh, planned a little further in advance, I could continue down the road here at Loyola and take it all the way down to the retreat house that they have, and then down to the river where Jones eventually took them. But I'm going to have to save that trip for another day. As I said before, I'm going to need to turn around and go back the way I came, so I'm not going to uh, press my luck of exhaustion, plus I haven't got permission to... Uh, go all the way there, and it's quite the hike then back up. But, uh, old Huckleberry. Oh, there's lots of flowers. See how observant I was. I only saw the one with its blooming. Very pretty. Lots of them. Well, I'm gonna probably sit for a few more minutes, check myself of ticks before I get up, and then I will start my trek back, but, uh, this was interesting, and I, uh, I enjoyed doing it. Maybe I should have picked a cooler day and brought more water, but um, to be able to follow in their footsteps, you know, as best as possible, even though I know it wasn't all that much. Hold on, I'm going to bring out something that I was working on. When I originally wanted to take this all the way down to the river, I printed out a map. There it is. Ugh. There we go. So here's a nice Google map, and I highlighted the route that I essentially just took. So I started... Here at the Cause House, I started down Wills Road, sorry it's blurry, down Wills Road, and then I had to go, that's my dash line when I had to take the uh, railroad tracks, and then I continued on Faulkner, crossed at 301 there, and then here's Huckleberry, now I was going to keep going, if I would went the whole way, it was 2.6 miles, now if I've only stopped here at Huckleberry, but I'll tell you one thing, I know I've only walked from Collis House to Huckleberry, but that seems much further than two, I'm, I'm, it seems even further than 2.6 miles, and I didn't even go the whole way. So either I'm out of shape, or it's just, uh, which, that's true, but it's also very hot. So, uh, let me turn this camera around. So thank you all for joining me on my little trek through, uh, Pine Thicket, and then all the way here to Huckleberry, just like Booth and Harold and Jones did. Um... I'm enjoying videotaping these things, so hopefully I'll, uh, one day I'll come back and I will do the trek just from Huckleberry here down to the, down to the river, which seems a bit more treacherous, and we can read some more from Jones's book, since he talks a great deal about that, and then putting them across the river. So, this is, uh, Dave Taylor on June 25th, yep, uh, Tuesday, the 2013, I'll just mix up the date there, and, uh, until next time, bye.